Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about uh, how to put together an oscilloscope, um, possibly inexpensively depending on equipment that you may or may not already have. The total cost of this solution will be more than buying a used oscilloscope if you have to buy everything, but uh, for me, for example, I already had all of the tools and so it was free. Uh, this oscilloscope doesn't do measurement and so you can't use it for calibration but uh, for visualizing waveforms and the effect of processing on them uh, it works fantastic. Okay, so the first thing we need aside from our sound source which will be the modular synthesizer uh, is an iPad. Uh, I know that this is immediately putting the price out of the range for most people but for those of you who already have an iPad like me that, um, that provides a fantastic display. Uh, in fact, uh, the results are much better than I have gotten with uh, uh, previous inexpensive digital storage oscillators. Um, it's uh, really a, a fantastic tool. Um, the next thing you need is the camera kit uh, for the iPad. This costs about 35 bucks if you don't have it, and it comes with two adapters. One, uh, they both look just like this pretty much, except one that has a slot for putting in SD media from your camera. The other, which is the one that we're going to use, has a USB slot for plugging in a camera, but it also happens to work with all kinds of other USB devices. The next thing that you need is a class compliant USB audio device to plug into it. I am going to use my El Cheapo Plantronics uh, telephony headset, which I bought for uh, talking on Skype. The neat thing about the Plantronics is that its connection is via this cable that just converts, as you can see, a pair of straight 8th inch audio jack um, connections into a USB connection. So the first thing we are going to do with that is take the headset right off so that we basically are left with a simple class compliant USB audio device. The last thing we need is just a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter because the modular outputs in uh, eighth inch, eighth inch uh, cabling and uh, if your device uses, uh, or the, uh, the modular hat uses quarter inch cabling, if you're using a modular or another synthesizer or another audio device that uses eighth inch, obviously you don't need this. So we're going to take that, let's see if I can do this one handed. We're going to take that and plug it into the mic jack on the uh, audio adapter and then we are going to plug the USB end into the USB plug on our camera connection kit which I'm going to do off camera. Sorry I'm going handheld on this because my tripod is broken right now. Um, like so. Then you fire up the iPad and plug it in. It plugs in right where the dot connector is. Um, sorry, I have this sitting inside the modular enclosure and it's a little hard to get at that connector. Here we go. So jack that in, make sure it's a nice solid connection. Give it a second and your iPad will display a warning. Do, do, do. Come on. Possibly because my because I've already plugged this in this session, it's not going to. Anyhow, it's um. Let's see if I, if I turn it off and on, will it do it? the worst demo video ever. No, it's not going to warn me, probably because I previously plugged this in this session. Um, normally when you do this it will plug up, it will pop up a little pop-up warning saying that uh, this device is unsupported and, it, and won't work and you just ignore that, okay it, and away you go. Now we are going to take a 
and an audio cable and we're going to start with one of my Q106 oscillators we'll grab the sine wave output plug it into our input and fire up a little app called whoops not the edge sketch app we're going to fire up a little app called oscope now there's a version called oscope light which is freeware. Uh, this version is the paid version which adds a couple of features but the freeware version will do what you need just fine. Now you can use the standard iPad pinch gestures to scale this so that you can get a more informative view. Get a, a good idea of the shape of our wave. There we go. So there you have your uh, your view. Now this is the sine wave out of the synthesizer.com Q106 oscillator. Here's the triangle wave. Here's the sawtooth. And in fact this uh, device helped me, helped me um, find a connection problem with my oscillator already because uh, it turns out that the connections for the sawtooth and the ramp were superimposed. Here's the ramp. Here's the pulse, and this is me varying the pulse width. Now things get really interesting when we take a view of uh, how effects affect this. Um, here is uh, as, uh, an STG Sound Labs wave folder, which is a nice little um, distortion module. Uh, and we are going to measure it instead. So nothing right now. Let's grab another cable. Try not to drop your cables. Um, and let's get the sign output from our oscillator and put it into the wave folder. Wave folder does all kinds of neat things. Um, so if I adjust the input offset, uh, you can see the um, the way that affects the wave. This is right from minus 5 through to plus 5. This is uh, right at unity, so presumably no offset. This is the input gain. So we have it we have it looking more or less like the source sine wave for a little while, and then as we push it into distortion, the um, the wave becomes more complex and that's a 50% fold mixture. If I turn the fold mixture all the way down obviously it's a little less gnarly. If I turn it all the way up and increase the gain it's much more gnarly. So uh, and then in fact we can uh, send an LFO into the control input and you can see how the how the uh, unit responds in real time. It's actually very smooth. Um, this is a sine wave coming off of one of my other oscillators and this is displaying the uh, wave folding being uh, modulated in real time. Uh, it looks gorgeous on the iPad display. Now as I mentioned before these um, those grid lines don't show measurements. In fact, if you scale, you'll notice that the grid lines don't change at all. They're purely decorative, and you can double tap to get rid of them, which gives you a nice clear display. Um, so you can't use this to uh, calibrate a module, but for getting an idea of what's going on with your waves in a way that's much more visual than uh, you ordinarily can, if you have all of this junk lying around, then uh, it's a fantastic option. It should work with any class compliant USB audio device. You don't need to have a Plantronics headset. Uh, all you need is the iPad, the camera connection kit, and uh, a simple class compliant USB audio device to jack into. It works far better than I expected and I'm very happy with the results.